the teachings and the way of life of the Essenes, probably most accurately described by Flavius Josephus, the Roman historian, Pliny the Elder, Philo, the Alexandrian philosopher. Others in this 300 year period often refer to them. Their information is supported by a number of modern historians. There seems to be a general agreement among these historians on the uniqueness of the Essenes and the basic information about them. Among all the beautiful teachings known to man, none has had more of a profound influence for good other than that of the Essenes. The Essene history documented by these historians covers approximately a 300 year span from 186 BC to the destruction of the Great Temple in 70 AD. The final Roman defeat of the Jewish people. Some were married and others celibate. The typical Essene was a mystic of the desert. But others were called zealots for their political translation of the scriptures into political action. Almost all were vegetarian, but some were modern but some modern historians suggest that not all were. Some modern French archaeologists have even hypothesized that Qumran was a spa at the Dead Sea. I don't even know. It was a, it was a health spa because the Essenes were all into healthy, the, the healthy living. Why were they vegetarians? Right. Why were they... They were paying attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is difficult to conclusively prove what actually was true 2,200 years ago. Josephus, after three year apprenticeship with him, described their teachings. The doctrine of the Essenes tends to teach all men that they confidently may trust their fate in the hands of God. Nothing happens without his will. They say that the soul is immortal and they aspire to lead a righteous and honest life. They are the most honest people in the world, and always good is their word. Very industrious and enterprising, and show great skill and concern in agriculture. A kind of a sense of justice, they never keep servants. They do not think it's right that one should be a slave or a servant of the other, as well as all men and brethren, and God is their father. They also perform the service of priests for all the wants such as food and clothing. They all live the same simple, industrious, and frugal life. The third class of philosophers among the Jews, and the class is most esteemed for their just and moral life, and that is the Essenes. They do not live in any particular town, but in every town the order has its respective house. In every town is an elder. The Essenes' worship of God is grand sacred and majestic. They eat and drink only what is necessary for their wants. In general, they do not act without the knowledge and consent of their elders, but it is always left to their own free will to exercise benevolence and compassion to all in want. Of all the classes of society, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, to comfort the sick, to visit and assist and comfort the prisoner, to comfort, to aid, and to protect the widows and the fatherless. They study with perseverance and interest ancient writings. They have profound knowledge of the art of healing, and they study it arduously. Now, who does that sound like? It all sounds like Jesus. Does Everything like that. of that says it's uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. They examine and are acquainted with the medicinal herbs and plants, which they prepare as medicine for man and beast. They were cold water bathers on a daily basis, wearers of only linen, and in general were purists in their life habits. Others suggest that they enjoyed music, dance, and other forms of movement and exercise. The Essenes were not seen as just philosophers, but were considered people of interest, intense moral and physical action, reflecting their intense beliefs. In accordance with their lifestyle, outside of healing, they were collectively involved primarily in different forms of agriculture. The Essenes called a therapeute, translated physician. Well, mm -hmm. physician heal thyself. Uh -huh. They are instructed in godly, goodly books, 
They are instructed in goodly books and the writings of the prophets, and they grow in wisdom and purity of heart. Many of the scenes have often stepped forth among the people as prophets. Their passages often came true, and this increased the esteem with the people as holy men and prophets. Rightly do they deserve to be called an example for the life of other people. Indeed, they are champions of faith, truth, and honesty. As the servants and arbitrators of peace, they are to wake up the perennial truth of all paths. The divine presence is the essence of who they are. When they are in this consciousness, it is known as Devakut. Their essence is the truth of all religions. From that truth, the natural state spontaneously emanates. That non-causal love, peace, contentment, and joy. Naturally. Naturally. And that is what they seek. The Essenes consciousness of Devika, cleaving to God, Yah, implies constant communion with the divine and an intense, overwhelming consciousness. Isn't that who we are supposed to be? Yeah. yeah. Well, that is the foundations of Christianity. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's who... That is the old ways. It's the old ways. Mm -hmm. And what I heard in all of this was Christ. Mm -hmm. It's what he was teaching. It's what he was teaching. Mm -hmm. The Essene consciousness is that of the awakened ones. <laughs> They are the ones who live in the eternal presence beyond the confines of the identification of with the mind and body. Oral tradition says that Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam who walked with Yah and became whole, was the first to seen. Oral and written tradition also teaches that Enoch was taken up alive. Enoch then walked with God and was no more. And that scriptures say that Noah who walked with Yah and was whole, Noah's son, Shem, also known as Melchizedek. No, no it's true. I, yep, yep. Received. That's, that's where Abraham got his. It. Bam. They will okay. pass this information to, from generation to generation. And Scriptures say that ahead. Noah also walked with Yah and was whole. Noah's son, Shem, also known as Melchizedek received the lineage from Noah and passed on the lineage to Abraham who walked before Yah and was all. Oh, Abraham. This is Abraham. That's, I, the, I, way, that's the, the old Jewish right. okay. spelling. Yeah. Okay. Abram. Abram. Uh -huh. okay. Certain oral traditions suggested that Sufis, Muslim... Sufis. The Sufis. The, yeah. Okay. Certain oral traditions suggested Sufis, Muslim mystics, and the Essenes who both suggest their mystical tradition of liberation goes back to Adam, may indeed have been one of the same mystic groups at one time. While Sufis became the Islamic mystical expression, both knowing their essential oneness. After the teachings of the lineage were transferred by Melchizedek, the son of Noah called Shem, to Abraham, they were then translated to Yitzhak, to Yaakov, and to Yosef teachings, and then reemerged with Moses' teachings of the first set of tablets brought down, brought down from Mount Sinai. In the Essene lore, Kabbalistic oral tradition, these esoteric teachings brought down by Moses were given to those who were spiritually ready. First but, set. But es many, esoteric. But many of the people were not ready for these esoteric teachings of the tradition. The second set of tablets containing what we call the Ten Commandments comprised the exoteric teachings mm -hmm. given to guide the vast majority who in their spiritual immaturity had created the golden calf. Until now, even the relatively concrete teachings of the magnificently simple and profound Ten Commandments have been too difficult for most of the world to follow. The Essenes taught a way of being whole and peaceful that included following the laws of the Torah. But the Essenes taught a way of being whole and peaceful that included following the laws of the Torah, but took one beyond 
it's one wrote step up. the rote performing of the laws. Mm -hmm. Their teachings were not meant to replace the Ten Commandments, but rather to offer a way to transform oneself into the living law of the Ten Commandments as the Ten Speakings. The teaching and lineage were given to King David, King Solomon, Samuel the prophet, and to the prophets Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Amos. Many of these prophets lived on the Mount Carmel mountain range and guided people who were gathered around them, creating a subtle beginning of Essene communities as far back as 600 BC. The Essenes sent forth teachers from their own communities to share these teachings with all nations, including mention the Essene in 20 BC, John the Baptist, and John the Beloved. Seems obvious. Though it's difficult to absolutely prove that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were Essenes, there is substantial oral and some written history that supports this essence of the Essene teachings can be found in the beautiful seven Beatitudes of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. The Essene movement evolved from them into the Qumran community by the Dead Sea in 186 BCE. <laughs> Essenes were more complex and diversified than that portrayed in the Qumran community text or by the Jewish historian Josephus. Parallel to Qumran were the Mount Carmel Essenes in their communities such as Nazareth in the foothills of Mount Carmel. John the Baptist, also in a scene, was said to be the cousin of Jesus. The of Jesus, James, was Jesus' appointed successor, and he maintained the teachings of Jesus, including the teachings of good works and grace as foundations on the path. James also ran the Jerusalem church. All these spiritual luminaries were Essenes. Jesus taught the enlightened Torah and Talmudic prophetic ways of the Essenes yeah, the as a Jew. No one knows exactly what happened to the Essenes. In 69 AD, forewarned by the advancing roving legions, they hid many of their manuscripts in sacred text, and they seemed to disappear. Oral tradition suggests that they brought their teachings in small groups to the far corners of the earth. Some of them were said to have been to become the Gnostics. Their knowledge has only resurfaced in this century through the finding of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947 at Qumran and the few manuscripts that have been preserved in monasteries. It is relevant today and is in ancient times. The Essene message of Devakut, God merging, or walk before Yah, and the whole, and to be whole is an eternal spiritual message. To walk before it means to be a blessing of God on this planet. Wake up and stay awake is the message and the blessing. <laughs> Let's put the pieces together. One little known fact that most Christians don't know is that the earliest followers of Jesus weren't called Christians. They were called Nazarenes. Nazarenes was the name of the northern Essenes at Mount Carmel. The Bible even confirms that the earliest followers of Jesus were called Nazarenes. After his conversion, the Apostle Paul was accused by the Jewish religious leaders of being a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. Before they were called Christians, the earliest followers of Jesus were called Nazarenes. For this group did not name themselves after Christ or with Jesus' own name, but Nazarene. All Christians were called Nazarenes once before the disciples began to be called Christians at Antioch. They were so-called followers of the apostles. They dedicate themselves to the law. However, everyone called the Christians Nazarenes, as I said before. Epiphanes could admit this and not come to the conclusion that maybe the Nazarenes are the original and true followers of Jesus is mind-boggling. Yet he called them heretics because their beliefs were different from the Roman Catholic beliefs. My contention is that there wasn't a city named Nazareth, but in the vicinity of Mount Carmel in modern-day Nazareth, there lived a sect of Essenes called Nazarenes, and that Jesus was a member of this sect. 
which is why his earlier followers were also called Nazarenes. The name he bears, Jesus, the Nazarene, has northern sectarian implications. The name borne by the earliest followers of Jesus was not Christians. They were called Nazarenes. Nazarenes. They were vegetarians and rejected animal sacrifices. It is important to note that the term Judean refers to southern Israel, especially the Orthodox Temple in Jerusalem. The Orthodox form of Judaism was headed by the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. And any true student of the scriptures will know that it was the same group of people who tried and eventually succeeded in having Jesus killed. The Gospels are filled with stories of Jesus and his arguments with the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus was a thorn in their side and he opposed them at every turn. And once in a while, they would pester him while he was preaching. In the New Testament, it is obvious that Jesus had legitimate reasons for his accusations against the Pharisees. These accusations center on the areas of teaching and practice. The old Nazarenes, like the Samaritans, were opposed to the Judean traditions, holding that the Southerners had falsified the laws of Moses. This is strikingly familiar about what Epiphanes wrote about the Nazarene Essenes when he said that they claimed that these books of Moses are fictions and that none of these customs were instituted by the fathers. We have Jesus in the Bible questioning the traditions of the religious leaders in his time and we now know there was a different form of Judaism being practiced by northerners in the land of Israel, which opposed those in the south because they claimed the southerners had falsified the law of Moses. Maybe the reason Jesus opposed the Pharisees so much was because Jesus belonged to the Nazarene Essenes in the north and believed that the Jews in the south had corrupted Judaism. He was one of them. It should have been. It should have been mentioned. But but then we have to say, well, he was always called Jesus of Nazareth. Uh -huh. So it was. Yeah. But we didn't know what that we we have thought until we have stumbled on this yeah. that that was a town right in Israel. And you know what? There is a town there, mm -hmm. but that was well after all. They Probably named it because, because of, of that. Yes. Makes but sense. there was a sect of Essenes yeah. called the Nazarites. And that's so they do speak of Jesus of Nazareth. And but for most of the Nazarites, they were Nazarite for seven years. Uh, for a lot of them, it was a lifetime, but uh, for seven years. Because that was a. Uh, Right, evidently, that was that the was, teaching. That, that was, was the, the initiative time. That was, that was when stuff was poured into them. Well, and they were clean vessels. And they weren't drinking. They weren't cutting their they hair. Weren't they weren't, they weren't they doing were anything but seeking taking after. Taking cold water baths daily to yeah. stay clean. Yeah. And eating raw vegetables. Yeah. And, 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 and them saying that the, the Qumran was more than likely a spa. They, I mean, it was all healthy reasons. Think about that. Everything that they were doing, it was almost monk-like. Yeah. The way they were living their life. But it was nothing but God's will. Right. Creeped those people out. It scared them. That's where the power was, and they knew it. But they were happy with man's power. That's why they got That's all they could understand. Yeah. Yeah. Answers that too. Mm -hmm.